All right, I think I'm going to get this started. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm very excited to give this 10-minute lightning talk about a tool I've been working on. Uh, this is Exploratory Design Tools for Makers. Um, I'm just going to launch right in. And me, briefly, I'm a back-end dev at Metabase. I previously studied mechanical engineering. I love designing and making things. And honestly, I'm just kind of hacking my way through it. Um, this tool is called Bad Spreadsheet. That way, it doesn't have to work perfectly, and uh, you know you get what you pay for. <laughs> it's right in the name. Um, so what is it? It's a 2D canvas where you can place cells. All of the cells have two states. They have an edit state and a value state. And they can be moved and resized. They, cells can contain closure code and data. The content, contents of a cell are evaluated as due. So if you have multiple forms in there, and the last you get the last value. Um, and any hiccup in that last value is rendered. Here's a little example here. Um, H3 renders there. Uh, but the value of references, there's a way to reference cells from other cells, and that's with a C-sharp form. Um, and it's just a little special little thing. If you use C-sharp ID and then the ID of the cell, then you get that cell's value in place. Uh, there's also position references um, that you can use to reference a position, and therefore any cell that ends up occupying that space, you get that value. Uh, but more than that, you get what's called controls, and there's a special way to write those into the cells as well. Uh, there's numbers, sliders, and points editors here. Uh, and there's more to come. Why build this? Uh, direct manipulation is very powerful and it's very fast. Design needs space. You know, instead of just scrolling up and down, you can scroll left and right as well. Uh, and also, it's fun and cool. Um, and now it's demo time. So let me just zoom this out and get moving. So here we have uh, this actual slideshow was, it, it, you know, the render is right here. And all of the slides that you've seen here are just defined below. Uh, so I can go ahead and change them if I wanted to. I'm going to just go ahead and change, I don't know, this background to green. Well, it's black because this is wrong. There you go. So you can see right away that I've got things set up to um, it just render and reference right away. So how I made the slideshow is very simple. Um, this renderer here, I'm sorry, I hit the back button. Let's get back to it. This renderer here references all of the contents of this here, which is just a list of maps that are my slides. And then um, it renders one at a time. I just do get um, the number slide, and that's referenced over here with this number. So if I go negative one, there's no... Um, that's nil, so then you get a blank slide. Um, so that's just a pretty fun thing you can build in this tool. I just did this kind of quickly, coded it up. Uh, I got married recently, and one thing that we did together was design a stained glass piece. And I used a, a, an algorithm that people use in game dev called wave function collapse to make a sort of randomly generated design. And um, you can see that it actually, we, we made it, you know, it's right there. Um, and I used it also to make these name tags, and I can um, show you how that looks here. If I just run it. The reason um, I have it gated by a true here is because um, in the case of running with um, blank spaces, the way the algorithm works, I didn't optimize it or anything, so it just takes much longer to collapse, and I don't want to be waiting here. Uh, looking goofy. But here, I've also wired it up to a number, so it's random every time. But if I'm trying to design a piece that could actually be physically made, I do need to consider, you know, you can't actually cut glass like this, so I'd have to um, kind of iterate through it a little bit, pick the one I like the most uh, that makes the most sense, and then I can move on from there. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how that turned out, and it's really fun to be able to see um, you know, 
see your changes live. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh yeah, so I was recently in Zurich and we went to a museum and I saw this cool um, uh, floor. <laughs> I saw this cool floor, this design on the floor. So I took a picture, I just um, you know, used my phone to, to skew it straight and I thought, hey, that'd be fun to try and kind of steal the design from it. But I don't know the dimensions, so what if I can make a little tool that I can uh, uh, just, just draw out the 2D shapes and adjust them as needed? Well, okay, I've done that right here. Um, since I've messed this up, what, what this actually is, how I made it, is this is the points editor, um, and you can actually drag the points around, and it will have an actual impact. It, the, the points value is available from that cell. Um, but it's not that intuitive to have your graphic and the points that you're editing um, not directly over top of each other. So I came up with this sort of hack where you can hit this um, pancake stack and it stacks all of them and now you get the points lined up where you want them to be. So you just saw it earlier here, um, this point ID 5. I can reference it in code, and in this case I drew a Bezier curve, and then I used that curve, mirrored it, and patterned it around to get this layout here. Um, you can you know, move circles and all of that. And this is just using values and running through closure functions, so you can come up with more complicated shapes. If I had a lot of time, I could sit here and do some live uh, tracing, coming up with functions on the fly but uh, that's for another time. Here, I, um, here is the code that is rendering this um, pattern. And this tool is not meant to be like a place where you write your production grade closure code. This is an exploratory space. You're allowed to write um, your functions all in a let binding because it's easier and quicker when you come up with it. Um, I came up with this sort of pattern here. The points in the cell are in a map, and they have a position. I didn't want to have to like pass that map as an argument all the time, so I just um, have the points here in the let binding, and then all of these functions are just used. They've just got the points right in line. And like I said, that, that doesn't uh, abstract very well beyond this cell, but this gets the job done exactly the way I wanted. I have a 2D drawing that I can manipulate here, and I can take that into whatever program I want later. I can turn it into a quilt design. I could uh, draw it on the axi draw, anything like that. But I'm not limited to just two dimensions. I also have, um, what if I had an open SCAD uh, code editor and renderer, but it was actually just worse? Um, you can do that. <laughs> Uh, here, I, I had also designed the arch to hold the stained glass piece, and um, I came up with this actually on the plane right here. Um, I'm calling open SCAD and rendering a PNG, and then every time that render changes, I'm just, uh, I'm just referencing that image. And so this is literally just an image being displayed. So there are better ways to do it, but you can imagine, you know, uh, since this is a, you know, a parametric design space, I can make a model, I can expose a few parameters, and I can you know, add sliders and adjust things until I've got exactly the right shape I want, export that, 3D print it, bring it to a shop, you know, whatever, whatever you need. It's all right there, ready to go. But I also have um, sometimes uh, the desire to use what are called uh, sign distance functions. That's just another way I, I can represent 3D shapes, and this is another work in progress viewer that um, lets me render those out nicely. So here we go. Uh, let's see, what's the, there we go. I've got rotation and all the normal, you know, 3D stuff. Here I am rendering these SDF boxes with a smooth union, and I have this cell here, which, where did it go? Here we are. So it's very scrappy. Here we go. So, you know, I can change this. 
value here. And you can see the render changes. Uh, let's do a more drastic change. There we go. And as you can imagine, this is just a simple cross with a smooth union. You can come up with all kinds of amazing 3D designs uh, and just manipulate them on the fly, do whatever you want. And that is the power of a nice 2D canvas on which you can explore all of your designs. It's closure powered. It, um, le it lets you put things wherever you want. It lets you follow your, your, your brain's imagination, try this out, scrap it, and uh, just explore the design space. As you can see, uh, this, this is all just on one canvas. I didn't, I didn't have any rhyme or reason to where I put things. It's all kind of all over the place, but that's exactly the point. And I hope this demo has given you a brief uh, look into you know, the, the exciting potential of a tool like this. Uh, thank you for your time.